What is going on you beautiful people? Welcome to Star Wars Comics and it's gonna be a happy new year for sure because then do you realize like we got so much Star Wars content in 2023 that it's gonna be totally bananas because in 1st of March we got Mandalorian Season 3, uh, then in mid mid-March I think uh, it's Jedi Survivor, the Jedi Survivor game, and then should be either summer or September probably the Ahsoka show is coming as well. Uh, it's a great great time to be a Star Wars fan and 2023 is um, is one of those years where possibly it's going to be one of the best Star Wars years to date, even though we don't really know what's going to happen with Rogue Squadron at the end of the year, if it's going to release. I I don't think it is because it's been delayed, but you never know. They might recover. We're going to see what happens with that. But the series, the sheer amount of content, the series and everything that we have, I think it's going to make up for it for sure. The Skeleton Crew afterward, that's going to release by fall or maybe even winter. You don't know. Uh, uh, but Bad Batch Season 2 is coming on Wednesday. We can't wait to cover that. It's a two-episode debut. And what's interesting is that the supervising producer for the Bad Batch Season 2, Brad Rao, has definitely hinted at a possible Mandalorian connection that they're going to explain in Season 2. In a recent interview via Games Radar, he teased an answer to the potential of a Mandalorian connection that we definitely saw in the trailer for Bad Batch Season 2, and it all has to do of course with Dr. Pershing. Now immediately af as the trailer released for that, fans started speculating that there is a connection between this doctor that we see in the trailer and Dr. Pershing where they are wearing the same uh, uniform, they basically have the same function, serving the same function, and the conclusion of season one saw the Kaminoan cloner, Nala Say, be brought to a hidden Imperial facility where she is greeted by a human wearing this similar uniform that is of Dr. Pershing, uh, and she is called Omid Ab who we clearly see doing similar experiments with Grogu in The Mandalorian. Now, now Brad did not reveal any story details, credit to him, but he definitely hinted that the significance of the of that final scene will be explored further in this upcoming season. He went on to say, that's not a coincidence, but I don't want to talk about it too much about what's going on there. We've got to leave some things in the dark, but we do get into all of that. 100%. All right, that's great. So we definitely know that the Nalase and the cloning mysterious facilities as well as doctors will be 100% addressed in this season throughout maybe mid-season or towards the end probably. Um he did not reveal this the direct Mandalorian clone connection, but it is possible that we might get a hint of Grogu. That's what everybody wants to know or possibly see, you know? Because Dr. Pershing could be the second chance to what they failed back in the day with Grogu after Imperial times. What many are speculating, of course, and it's not a crazy idea, but I don't think it will probably happen. I mean, in my mind, I don't think they want this convoluted thing with Grogu. I think they will leave him alone just for the Mandalorian series for us to enjoy him in. But this is a fact that Grogu was alive during and after Order 66. Uh, during the Bad Batch timeline, Grogu is out there somewhere. As we see by Grogu's visions, he was not killed during Order 66. He survived. He is alive decades later in the Mandalorian timeline. So what did he do in between that time, the fans just don't really know. Will the Bad Batch Season 2 shed any light of it? That's what we're wondering, is that is this Doctor that we see in the trailer for the Bad Batch Season 2, is she the first phase of Grogu's experiments? Did she experiment on Grogu, a youngling, and other Jedi younglings? Did she start this initial phase of trying to create a clone Sith armory or something of that effect? Palpatine had his own crazy ideas of how he wanted to proceed, but the thing is that did, did this doctor create the foundation for what Dr. Pershing was trying to do then, decades later, in The Mandalorian. One thing is very interesting is that the themes are kind of similar in The Bad Batch Season 2 and in The Mandalorian, because everybody's after Grogu, and everybody's kind of, and everybody's kind of after Omega, since the Django DNA is being depreciated, but all in all, what we see in the trailer, and what we see in The Mandalorian series, it all has to do with good old crazy Palpatine 
Palpatine because Emperor Palpatine did return in Episode 9 Rise of Skywalker, and in my opinion, I think they want to justify his inexplicable return. We still don't know. We still haven't gotten a direct answer, and I think Grogu's imprisonment in the finale of Season 2 and, and what the Imperial Remnant was trying to do with him was for that particular reason of extracting his blood, doing something with it, um, and this may be a similar plan what they're trying to do in the Bad Batch Season 2. I mean, for crying out loud, you could actually see this plan kind of forming even back in the day during the 2017-18 Darth Vader Star Wars comic series. Um, during that time, uh, Darth Vader did retrieve from Jocasta Nu inside the Jedi Temple. By the orders of Palpatine, he did retrieve a children's force-sensitive list that the Jedi were keeping, knowing full well what Palpatine wanted to do with this list, which is essentially replace Vader at one point in time with these with these new force sensitive that should have been brought up by the Sith, the Empire, Palpatine under the direct command of Palpatine. Of course, at some point, Vader would have been replaced, killed, and new apprentices would rise. So in knowing that, Vader, what does he do? He takes the device containing the information of the force sensitive children's list and destroys it. So even back in the day, they were hinting that Palpatine wanted something more out of his newly found empire than just stormtroopers and special units running around trying to be the police of the galaxy. No, now that he was the complete full Sith that he had imagined, he dominates everything. He no longer has any use for the rule of two, of course, because the Sith were not in hiding anymore. They were in plain sight. They were ruling, dominating the galaxy through Palpatine and Darth Vader. So why would Palpatine still adhere to the rule of two? He could have easily gotten a lot more out of four sensitive children that now are not going to end up as Jedi, that now the Jedi cannot recruit anymore and bring in the Jedi Temple and raise them as future Jedi, why couldn't he grab them now first and bring them as dark side adepts or Sith assassins? Something along those lines. There might have been a place for Vader in this tumultuous thing, but probably not, and Vader knew this. The final point I want to make, really, is, is it a coincidence that, that these two series have been pit together? You see, both of these series were delayed and delayed. Now, they're going right alongside each other, because The Bad Batch Season 2 will start now, in January, but it will end towards March. In March, The Mandalorian Season 3 starts, so it will be a couple of, it might be a couple of weeks there that these two series are together they're running together therefore might there be a explanation in both these series as to what the empire was trying to do with these younglings and cloning processes and all these crazy experiments what they were leading to that's kind of my thoughts initially at this point i might be wrong but yeah we're gonna have to wait and see i, I can't wait to start watching the bad batch season two and especially like talking about it with you guys um it's gonna be tons of fun so be sure to stick around thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed leave a thumbs up down below subscribe for dailies now you have an awesome day star wars fans i'll see you in the next video and may the force be with you until then